Lesson 9. Organization and Time Management. Welcome back. You made it. This is your ninth and final lesson. I believe congratulations is in order. Well done. You should be proud that you've made it this far and excited that the next step is your final one to attain your well-deserved title as Certified Network Marketeer. Again, my name is Mark and your final lesson, Organization and Time Management, starts right now. Because the vast majority of people in direct selling begin as part-timers, organizational skills are essential for success. Direct sellers are pulled in a dozen different directions. You spend eight hours a day at your day job, the house needs cleaning, the kids need a ride to soccer practice, your boss needs you to work overtime, your spouse gets sick and needs your care, and on top of that, your direct selling business needs building and your people need training. Feels like there aren't enough hours in the day, but there are enough hours if you organize your business and manage your time properly. Successful people don't get more hours in a day than others. They just get more work done in the hours allotted to them than people still trying to taste success. The key to productivity is organization and action. Organization is identifying and prioritizing the things that need to be done. Action is consistently doing the things that bring the best results. Successful people excel at both. So what is the purpose of organizing your business? Successful people understand that organization is a means to an end, not an end in itself. Organization is essential to success in this business, but it doesn't guarantee success. There are lots of direct salespeople who abide by saying a place for everything and everything in its place. Their office is a tidy, not so much as a paperclip out of place. Files are organized, books are arranged alphabetically. One problem, they aren't growing or making any money. Their offices are organized, but their direct selling business is in a frenzy because they spend so much time getting organized that they aren't working the business. Hello? In this business, you don't get paid to organize your business. You get paid to build your business. And business building means attending to the three R's of direct selling. Retailing, recruiting, and retention. The actual purpose of organizing your business is to minimize time and efforts doing the mundane things so that you can spend more time and effort on the three R's. People who are new to the business sometimes find it hard to experience a smooth transition into direct selling because they fall victim to employee thinking. They have spent so many years working as employees that they're conditioned to think that they need the boss to tell them what to do. Here's how employee thinking works. Employers are in the driver's seat. They tell employees which days to work, what time to show up, when to go home, how many vacation days they can have, how long they can take their lunch hour, which tasks to work on, and when those tasks must be completed, how to do the job, how much the job pays, and even how many years before retirement. Employers make the rules. Employees follow the rules. That's the way things work in the world of corporate desk jobs. In the world of direct selling, it's just the opposite. In direct selling, you become not just the employee, but also the employer. You employ yourself. You set your weekly schedule. You set your hours. You assign your workload. You decide the vacation days. And you set your income by your actions and results. To be successful in direct selling, you have to rid yourself of employee thinking. In direct selling, you take control of your own calendar. Direct sellers who can liberate themselves of employee thinking and organize their work week and take the actions necessary to build a business are well rewarded. Those who can't break free from employee thinking drop out of the business and return to full-time jobs. So, to enjoy the benefits of the direct selling industry, you must plan your work and work your plan. Now we are going to discuss how a part-time plan can get big-time results. In more Build It Big, author, trainer, Belinda Ellsworth explains how part-timers can build a large, productive business by working just 15 hours a week. The secret is to get the most out of each hour. She calls them power hours. 
by making sure you spend your time only on the most productive activities. Her formula for success requires working two to three hours a day, five days a week, setting priorities for a part-time plan. Here's the formula. Business priority one, spend one hour each day retailing and recruiting. Business priority two, spend one to two hours a day on retention. Personal priority three, spend the other two days with your friends and family and yourself. That's a great plan, but good intentions are one thing, and action is another. Without action, they lead to nothing. To put your part-time plan into action, Ellsworth suggests the following. Schedule your power hours. Schedule your retailing and recruiting hours like you schedule a doctor's appointment. Write them on your calendar in ink. This time you allocate is an obligation, not an option. Divide your hour into four quarters and focus. Break your hours into 15-minute segments. Then focus only on the task at hand for each of those segments. If the category is follow-up calls, spend that 15-minute time frame making only follow-up calls. Commit to daily actions. Committing to a daily action plan of two to three hours a day, 15 minutes at a time, eliminates procrastination and improves productivity. There's more than a formula to help you get organized. Let's talk about some tools for organizing yourself and your business. In recent years, technology has introduced dozens of electronic devices to help people get better organized. PDAs, personal digital assistants, like Blackberries and smartphones, not only store names and phone numbers, but they can keep us connected to the internet 24 seven. But before you run out and spend your hard earned money on the latest e-gizmo, Remember that organizational tools, like organization itself, are a means to an end, not an end in itself. Truth is, a to-do list in the hands of an action-orientated person is more effective than the latest BlackBerry in the hands of a procrastinator. Direct sellers were building big business by using dial telephones and day timers decades before the digital age. PDAs are great if you're the engineer type, but in the end, the best organizational tool is the tool that works best for you. For millions of people, that tool is the low-tech to-do list. The to-do list is easy to use, easy to update, inexpensive, and effective. Here's a simple way to create to-do list for your direct selling business. First, buy a stack of line three by five cards. Take one card each evening and fold it in half to create four pages front and back. On the top of one half, write to call. At the top of the other half, write to meet. Flip the card over. On the left half, write to do. On the right half, write to get. Your card will look like this. To-do lists are low-tech smartphones. They fit into the palm of your hand and perform basically the same functions. The old technology works just fine if you work. A good planner and a cell phone with unlimited minutes are all the organizational tools you really need to build a business. If the latest high-tech gadget helps you be more productive, that's great. But gadgets don't build businesses. People build businesses. In the end, it's the user of the tool, not the type of tool that makes the difference between success and failure in this business. No matter what formulas or tools that you use, it's all useless if you don't set deadlines and stick to them. Nobody likes deadlines. They cause stress and anxiety. They make us toss and turn at night. We hate deadlines, but they work. Without deadlines, your morning newspaper would be blank. TV newscasts would go black. Software development would stop and the content on Google and Yahoo would be brief and outdated. Deadlines work because they make us focus and they fight procrastination. Our inborn human tendency to put things off until the last minute with the hopes that they will just disappear on their own. We meet deadlines at work because we're accountable to an employer. If we miss too many deadlines, we get fired. But in direct selling, we set our own deadlines. If we're accountable only to ourselves, there's a good chance we'll keep pushing those deadlines back until they never get done. That's why it's essential 
that you let others in your group know your deadlines. By publishing your deadlines, you make yourself accountable to others, dramatically increasing the likelihood you'll meet your deadlines. Now let me ask you a question. Have trouble saying no to people? In direct selling, it's important that you learn to set boundaries and say no. Moss Hart, Broadway dramatist and actor, once remarked, all the mistakes I ever made were when I wanted to say no, but said yes instead. Look back on your mistakes, and you'll likely agree with Hart. It's easier to say yes than no, isn't it? Saying no to your spouse can end up in an argument. Saying no to your children can result in tent tantrums when they're toddlers and frowns and tears when they're teens. And saying no to a friend can result in a long silence or even the loss of a friendship. Yes, it's tough to say no, but it is necessary. Especially in direct selling. Unless you know when to say no, you won't be able to use your time to grow your business because you'll always be giving your time to somebody else. You can either run your business or you can let your business run you. When you run your business, you're protective of your time. You're focused on growing your business. You set priorities. You retail. You recruit. For those things to happen, you have to set aside time to make that happen. And that means knowing when to say no to people who value your time less than you do. Now, contrast that with someone who lets their business run them. They say yes to trying to bring back an inactive distributor instead of recruiting a new one. They say yes to helping distributors who refuse to become independent. They say yes to distributors who want someone to work the business for them. They say yes to people who make lots of excuses but little money. By saying yes when you should say no, you're opening the door to let your business run you. And if that happens too much of the time for too long of the time, you'll get run right out of the business. We spoke about priorities earlier when we mentioned Belinda Ellsworth part-time plan formula. Let's dig a little deeper into setting priorities. Back when we were in the school, the smart kids loved receiving their report cards. They got all A's in their classes. Most of us were happy to get B's and even C's. But to get a D or an F, if you ever got one of those, made you feel pretty sad. Aren't you glad those days are over? I'd hate to burst your bubble, but the truth is, grades don't end after school is over. Lots of businesses are using a grading standard. For example, stocks and bonds are graded A, B, C, and D. So are insurance companies. So are mortgages. So are commercial loans. Realtors and insurance agents get graded on how they spend their time. The best use of time in real estate, for example, is the time spent when showing clients houses or listing property. That's considered A time among realtors. A time is top priority time because that's when contracts are signed and money is made. Top producers in direct selling understand the importance of setting priorities and maximizing their time. And they do their best to spend their time when it counts the most. If time management were prioritized and graded in direct selling, it would likely look like the following grade card. A time is time spent earning money and growing the business. Activities in A time include prospecting, recruiting, retailing, presenting the opportunity, sponsoring and hosting a live event, following up in person. B time is time spent setting a table for earning and growth. Activities in B time include setting appointments, training new people, three-way calling, mentoring your downline, following up on the phone. C time is time spent preparing to grow and learning the business. Activities in C time include reading personal growth books, preparing training, talks and materials, driving to meetings or events. D time is delaying work or doing dead-end tasks. Activities in D time include trying to convince someone to join you in the business, buying shelves to put your product on, trying to turn a negative person into a positive person, and the lowest grade would be E time, where you avoid the business altogether. Activities in E time include going to the movies instead of following up, complaining to others why the business isn't working for you, putting off reading the book your upline recommended, 
watching your favorite TV program instead of contacting and inviting. As with any grading system, your goal is to bring the B and C grades up to an A. Take a look at the categories again. Where are you spending your time? Is most of your time A time? Are you just spinning your wheels in B and C time? Or are you doing your best to move those tasks into the A category? In direct selling, time is more than a grade. Time is money. So spend it wisely and well. Our time together has come to an end. It's been a wonderful journey for us, relaying knowledge and inspiration to an ambitious individual such as you. We do hope you've enjoyed the journey as well. You only have one more step to take before becoming a certified network marketer, and that is your certification exam. Feel free to review any lesson at any point in time until you're confident and at ease with the information provided to you. You started with one step. Now continue by taking your last before starting your new journey as a certified network marketer. Remember, IDSEI is here to help you anytime, anywhere. For now, goodbye and good luck.